Well, welcome to our first lesson in Unit 5 on Linear Functions. In this lesson, your learning targets are to be able to identify linear equations and functions, and to be able to graph those linear equations and functions, and also talk about their domain and their range. As is usually the case with the first section of any new unit, we have some new vocabulary that we need to talk about. And the first thing is a linear function. Now a linear function is just a function that graphs as a line. And keep in mind what a function was from our previous study. A function says that any element in the domain can only go to one place in the range. The parent function, that's a new term, a parent function is just the simplest form of a function. For a linear function, our parent function is f of x equals x. And remember, that's the same as y equals x. It's the simplest form of a linear function. A linear equation is an equation that can be written in this form, ax plus by equals c. And this particular form we call the standard form. The standard form that I introduced in the last slide, ax plus by equals c, has some restrictions on those coefficients a, b, and c. And a, b, and c are integers. Remember, integers are positive or negative whole numbers with no common factors. So the restriction is that they must be integers and they can't have common factors other than themselves or 1. So let's say I had 2x plus 4y equals 6. If that were the case, I would have to divide each of those coefficients by 2 because they all shared a factor of 2. So remember, no common factors are allowed between those. The other thing that is a restriction is the first coefficient in front of the x variable has to be positive. So it says a has to be greater than or equal to 0. If a ends up being 0 and there is no x term and there's only a y term and a constant, then b cannot be 0 as well. If a is 0, b cannot be 0. So you can't have both a and b being 0, or else we don't have a linear equation or a linear function. So we're kind of throwing these two terms around, an equation and a function. And I want to just briefly describe the difference between an equation and a function. So on the left is an example of a linear equation, 3x minus 6 equals 0. And there, you'll notice that there is no y variable in there. Over on the right-hand side, these are examples of linear functions. So we have f of x equals 3x minus 6 and y equals 3x minus 6, where we have both an x and a y variable. So the solution to an equation or a function is any value that makes it true, any value that makes the equation true. So for this linear equation, the only value that we would have that would make it true is 2. There's a single uh, value that would make that true. Now when we have a linear function here, there are lots of values that would make that true. There's an infinite number. So when we're speaking of linear equations, we talk about the root of a linear equation. And this is the value of the x-intercept. In this linear equation, the root would equal 2. It's the value that makes it true, and it's where it crosses the x-axis. We'll talk a little bit more about intercepts in our next lesson. When we're speaking of functions, we talk a lot about zeros. And this is where the function is equal to 0 which also is indicative of the x-intercept. It's where it crosses the x-axis. So linear functions have zeros, linear equations have roots. Sometimes we will call this a linear equation or a linear function. Um, so just kind of a little bit of difference there in the vocabulary. We want to be able to identify linear functions from graphs. So first of all, to determine whether or not it's a function, we use the vertical line test. Remember the vertical line test says that if a vertical line passes through the graph more than once, it can't be a function. So once we know whether it's a function, we're going to check whether it's linear. And being linear just means it graphs as a line. So let's look at this first example in the top left. Is it a function? And if we do a vertical line test, yes, it is a function. Is it linear? 
Well, yes, it is. It graphs as a line. In the second example in the top middle, is it a function? Well, if we pass a vertical line through that, yes, it is. Any vertical line that we pass through there only crosses once. Is it linear? Well, this time we have to say no, it's a curve. It doesn't graph as a line, it's graphed as a curve. This one's called a parabola. On the top right, is it linear? Whoops, let's go back. Is it a function, first of all? And this one is a no for the function, okay? It's no because that vertical line where x is equal to 3, uh, that vertical line would cross the vertical line x equal 3 an infinite number of times. So it's not a function, even though it is linear. And go ahead and work on those last three on the bottom and bring those answers to class. We also want to be able to identify a linear function from a table. When we're identifying the linear function from a table, what we want to look for is a constant change for both variables x and y. So here is a list of ordered pairs and here they are in table form. So the x variable, it looks like to start from 2 and go to 5, we're adding 3. And that's consistent. So we have a constant change for our x variable. When we look at our y variable, we have a constant change of minus 1. So this one is a linear function. Over on the right-hand side for letter B, this example, for the x variable, it's going up by 5s. So, so far, so good. And then when we look at the y variable, it went down by 6 but then it only went down by two for the next two. So this one definitely is not a linear function because it did not have a constant change for y. So here are some examples of linear uh, functions and not linear functions from their equations. So this is a linear equation or a linear function. Uh, this is a linear function. All of these are linear functions. We can divide a variable by 2. We can have coefficients in front of our variables. We can be missing the constant term, or we can be missing an x term. Okay, These are all examples of linear functions. Now on the right-hand side, these are not linear functions, and here's why. In this first example, we can never divide by a variable. It's okay to divide by a constant like we do over here, but we can't divide by a variable. We also cannot multiply variables together. So this one is not linear because the variables are multiplied together. And the third example here, we cannot have an exponent greater than 1. Um, another example that I don't have in here is a vertical line. Vertical lines are not linear. That's why I put this on the right-hand side. All vertical lines have the form x equal a number, and they are not linear functions. They are linear, but they are not functions. Horizontal lines, they are linear functions. They all have the form y equals a number. They graph as horizontal lines, and they are linear functions. So keep that in mind when you're dealing with horizontal and vertical lines. One kind is a function, and one kind is not. In this slide, we're going to tell whether the function is linear. And if it is linear, we're going to write the function in standard form and figure out what those coefficients a, b, and c are. So our first example, 2x is equal to y over 3 minus 4. This example, what I can do is I can go ahead to get rid of uh, this 3 in the denominator. I am going to multiply every term in the equation by 3. So I'm going to distribute a 3 through the parentheses. When I do that, I get 6x equals y minus 12. Okay, the 3's cancel when I multiply the y, so that's where that went. And then to put it in standard form, I would need to subtract y from both sides. And that leaves me with 6x minus y is equal to, remember these y's cancel, negative 12. So my coefficients, a is 6, b is negative 1, and c is negative 12. Let's go ahead and look at example b. This one you may recognize as a proportion, and we can use what's called means extreme or cross-multiplying. When we do that, we get 3x is equal to 5y. And then we need the y term next to the x term, so I'm going to subtract 5y from both sides. And remember, these are not like terms, so they don't combine. 
So I get 3x minus 5y is equal to 0 this time. These add to 0, so I need to write that as a 0, which tells me a is 3, b is negative 5, and c is 0. And my third example here, in this example, uh, I am dividing by a variable. So the question is, tell whether the function is linear. This one is not linear, so I don't have to do anything else. If it's not linear, you can just stop. Um, these other two were definitely linear. It's OK to divide by a number, but we can never divide by a variable. So go ahead and try letters D, E, and F and bring those answers to class. If we want to graph a linear function, all we need to do is find two ordered pairs. For any two points, there's only one line that contains those two points, and so we only need to find two ordered pairs to find our line. So here's an example. It says, tell whether the function is linear. If so, graph the function and find the domain and the range. Well, this looks like it's a linear function. So yes, it is. And we want to graph the function and find the domain and range. Well, all I need to do, as I said before, is I need to just find two values, two ordered pairs that will work in this equation. So what if I put in 0 for x? If I put in a 0, I get y equals 5 times 0 minus 9. So that gives me 0 minus 9. That's pretty messy. Let me erase that. 0 minus 9, which is um, negative 9. Let me try that again. Sorry for being so messy there. So y equals 5 times 0 minus 9, which is 0 minus 9, which is negative 9. So 0, negative 9 is a point that's on that line. Let's try another value. What if I put in x is equal to, let's try, I don't know, maybe 3. So if I put in a 3, y is equal to 5 times 3, this time minus 9. Well, that's equal to 15 minus 9, which is equal to 6. So 3, 6 is also on my line. So let's go ahead and graph those two points. 0, negative 9 is going to be down here. And then let's also graph 3, 6. So I go from the origin, 3 right, 1, 2, 3, and up 6. And so that's right there. Try to get that a little more accurately. There we go. And so I'm going to go ahead and graph that line. Let's make it a blue line since I'm using blue dots. And we need arrows on the ends. So here we go. We will graph this one. It starts here, goes through that point. So my line will look something like that. All right, so y equals 7. What will that one look like? y equals 7. Well, if I want to graph y equals 7, uh, what do I put in and what do I get out? So let's put in, I don't know, 0. And there is no x to put anything into, so my output is just always 7. So it doesn't matter what I choose for x. I can choose negative 5 if I want to. My output, no matter what I choose for x, is always 7 because there's no input value. So 0, 7 means it crosses the y-axis at 7. Well, it looks like it's about right there. And then negative 5, 7. Looks like that must be right about here. And actually, any value that I pick for x, I will get um, y equal to 7. So let's go ahead and graph that one in red. I'll choose a red line here. And that one's going to go y equals 7. That'll just look just like that. It's a horizontal line through y equals 7. So then the domain and the range. We need to talk about the domain and the range. Well, for our first equation, I forgot to talk about that. So the domain for this one is all real numbers. And the range for that one is also all real numbers. There's nothing I can't put in. So I could put decimal values in. I could put irrational numbers in. No matter what I put in there, um, I'm going to get all real numbers. And then for my second equation, y equals 7, my domain, I can put anything in there, all reals. 
But the only thing that's different is my range. What do I get out? Well, my range for this one is just seven. That's the only thing that we're ever gonna get out. So you use the curly brackets and just the number seven. So for linear functions that are not horizontal lines, our domain will be all real numbers and our range will be all real numbers. So as long as it's not a horizontal line, domain and range for any linear function should be all real numbers. However, if we're dealing with real life world situations, sometimes we might have restrictions on the domain or the range or both. Here's an example. It says the relationship between human years and dog years is given by the function y equals 7x where x is the number of human years. Graph the function and give its domain and range. Well, all we need are two points, so you could graph 0, 0. Okay, that could be one value, 0, comma, 0. If we have 0 human years, we have 0 dog years. Or we could graph, what if I have 5 human years? What would that correspond to in dog years? Well, y is equal to 7 times 5, so that would give me an output of 35. So I could graph those two points, um, and then I would end up with something that looks like that. So there's a picture of the graph. The domain and the range. Now this is where we're going to have restrictions. I can pick um, only values that make sense for my domain and range. So in this example, the domain has to be anything greater than or equal to zero. I'll never have negative time or negative years. And the same thing for the range. We're only going to be in the first quadrant, so we'll never have any negative inputs or outputs. So just to review some of the concepts from this lesson, linear functions describe a lot of different real world situations that involve constant rates of change. Examples of those might be a constant change in cost or distance or speed. And in a linear function, so here's some blanks over here on the left, and there's going to be a whole bunch of them that appear here. In a linear function, a constant change in x corresponds to a constant change in y. So we need to have that same value for both x and y. And in this example, I have y equals negative 3x minus 4 x is giving me a constant change of plus 1, and that corresponded to a constant change of minus 3 in the y variable. An equation that can be written in this form, we call that standard form, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a and b are not both 0, that is called a linear equation. In this specific example, y equals negative 3x minus 4, I could rewrite that in standard form by adding 3x to both sides which would give me the coefficient of a is 3, b would be 1, and c would be negative 4. Here's a note that if b is 0 and a and z are not 0 real numbers, then the linear equation does not describe a function. It describes a vertical line. So remember, if b is equal to 0, so b is our y term, so we would get just x equal to a number, that would be our vertical line, not a function. The graph of a linear function is a line. So here's the example that we use for all three columns. And that'll do it on our lesson on linear functions. See you next time.